unbox and take a look at War of 1812 Solitaire. This is from Worthington Games, uh, and they were kind enough to send me this copy. I was asking about another one of their games uh, in the Battle Brigade series, which I've covered many of those. Uh, and I was asking about Gettysburg, and Grant, what a guy, said, hey, let me send you a box. So I'm making my way through that box. Uh, these are the unboxing videos, but I'll also do some uh, play or after action type videos as well, and maybe just overall reviews uh, as we uh, get further into that box. But uh, today we're at War of 1812 Solitaire. I did not know much about this uh, game, and there's there's two in the line, I think, right now. There's the War of 1812, and then there's uh, Pacific 1942, I believe. Um, and so uh, I was kind of surprised to see these, and because, I mean, I, uh, Worthington is no, you know, does solitary games, but they're usually bigger box games, and these are small box games, as you can see here. These can kind of fit into uh, an over... <laughs> overly large pocket uh says right here the war of 1812 ended in a dar in a draw but there was a real possibility that canada might become an american state or that the newly established united states might be forced to return to to as colonies to great britain the war of 1812 solitaire is a game on the campaigns along with the american and canadian borders you take the role of Americans against an autonomous British player. So it's one player, hence the solitaire, right? Um, and there's not a lot of bits in here. There's a board, there are some counters, and uh, I think a die, and that might be it. Well, the rules, of course, and I think that might be it. But why don't we, why don't we check that out by cracking into this box and seeing what we have inside here. Uh, I don't know if they're going to make more in this series or if this is the, um, these two are, you know, kind of a test thing. Worthington is really uh, uh, kind of innovated and novel uh, about doing things. I mean, they, they came out with, the, during COVID, they had the uh, war game book or the war, war book or game book series uh, and did several of those. And they, they went to those because they, it was going to be harder to do a box version. And then they eventually came out with the box version. And all of those were solitaire, or at least had a, a strong solitaire element to it. Uh, they've also had some other big box games, kind of their siege, great sieges that are solitaire. And uh, they've also redone a lot of victory point games, which are solitaire. But now this is yet another line of solitaire games uh, that they are exploring. So, uh, you know, hats off to them. And, you know, I, you know me, I like my solitaire games. Uh, I like all games. Let's let's be let's be honest. But uh, solitaire has a sweet spot because uh, my kids uh, aren't as interested in the hobby as they once were, or if ever. And so I find myself uh, sadly alone. So here we go. Uh, the bits are going to be standard, excellent quality that you expect from Worthington. These are the kind of the player aid boards here. This is the British actions. So you're going to roll a die, and it'll tell you kind of what. Uh, what they are going to do from an AI standpoint. This is your board that's going to tell you the sequence of play and then the American action chart, which you can see there. You're going to roll and see kind of how many uh, uh, RPs you're going to get. And then this is how you can spend your RPs. You know, you can, uh, you can use them to play actions. The British bot does not use RPs. You play one to three actions per turn and you can attack. Uh, you can um, add re reinforcements or attack the Northwest Warrior. So it gives you all your different, there's your different actions there. Uh, this is a situation uh, where I believe you're you're attacking, um, I think there might be some Navy. I mean, a lot of the War 1812 was over the Great Lakes, but uh, I think you have both. Uh, I think this is kind of at a strategic or at the very least an operational kind of view of that conflict. And so it's going to be somewhat abstract. But nice boards, player aid boards right there. Here are the rules. And the rules themselves are not that complex. I think you have a total of, let's see here, you've got a total of nine uh, panels of rules. But really the rules go to, uh, well, actually you have 12 panels, but the panels nine through uh, 12 are history. 
you know, the, the history of the conflict, giving you some context. You really stop, you know, a little over halfway on, on uh, page eight of the rules. And there are a single page of rules here, front and back. And so you can just go panel by panel. This should not take you very long to get through. And they actually have some highlighted examples in here as well. So there are the rules. So I probably will try to get this to the table relatively soon and do a uh, after either a play along or after action. So here are your counters. Uh, nice, thick, pre-rounded. Of course, they are round. Uh, looks like you get like what? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 counters with two, uh, well, with two plugs. And then this, I think, is just a, a proof of purchase type counter. So really uh, not that many counters that you have to use in this game. And they're double sided. And you're going to be keeping track of kind of where the forces are on this board here. Get the board out. It's mounted. There's the die. And this is place where you can store all the counters when you're done. Let's get the, and I'm just pushing that over to the top there, it, uh, the counter almost punched out. So we've got a nice backing here. We've got some art on the back, very nice. And then on the front, you have the board itself. And so not a very large board here. And you're gonna have all your different track. You have your turn tracks here. And then this looks kind of like a little bit of a States of Siege game where you're gonna try to be pushing along these different areas, uh, York, uh, you're trying to t uh, as, as a fortress that you're trying to take over, and so is Montreal. Again, the British are playing, uh, or, or the AI is playing the British, and so you are commanding the, the American forces to take over these areas. You have these lakes, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, and Lake Champlain down here. You've got your resource points. So you're going to roll and see what your resource points are. You've got your uh, Northwest Warriors or NW Warriors. You have your advanced results. You have your ship battle results. So that you're both having land and naval. Again, it's in a relatively abstract uh, framework. And so uh, there you have it. That is what you get in the box of a War of 1812. Uh, I'm going to be posting this. Uh, I'm thinking about posting this during the week of... Um, July 15th, uh, and there were some pretty major uh, conflicts that took place in this uh, battle, uh, in this theater, or in this war, the War of 1812. Uh, during that time period, uh, you had the uh, Battle of the River Canard in the Great Lakes region. So, uh, well, this is all the, the Great Lakes, right? Uh, you had the Siege of Fort uh, uh, Mackinac. I don't know if that is on here. Don't know if I see it on here. Just doing a quick look. If you see it, let me know. Um, also had some naval conflicts. You had the USS Nautilus versus the HMS Shannon on July 17th. Uh, I wonder where that was at. I don't see it on my little chart here. Uh, then you had the first battle of Sackett's Harbor in New York. That was on the St. Lawrence River. So that would have been over over here and into uh, New York, I believe there. So some some major battles done during this time frame, uh, or when I'm being when I'm posting this. So this might find its way into my special days as well. One of my playlists is special days, where you can um, try to keep up with history, or I try to keep up with history, or we both try to keep up with history. Anyway, well there you have it. Uh, this looks very interesting. I imagine the Pacific is going to be somewhat similar but yet different uh, but it's probably going to have you know similar components but yet dealing with uh world war ii uh pacific theater so there you have it that is the war of 1812 uh solitaire from worthington i want to thank grant again for getting this out to me uh these look like a nice little package uh that you can pull out set up play one, two, three times, and then uh, put back and, uh, you know, get back to work. You know, you can do this over the lunch hour. This looks uh, that, uh, that easy to get into. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let me know your thoughts on this uh, or anything else you want to talk about. Just keep it civil. Thanks all.
Thanks for watching.